Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas, where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist. Got a Wayback is out. Uh, got my Mel Bay books here, Into the Labyrinth, and Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary. And uh, yeah, it's 2024, y'all. The start of the spring semester here at UNT. Uh, it's late January. There's a party going on in the hall, apparently. You know, everybody's uh, high spirits beginning of the semester. Um, I'm coming back from uh, Christmas uh, winter break. I was in Brazil, did some gigs, went to the beach, hung out. Um, came back, had got my, a wisdom tooth out. I'm a little loopy right now. I took a little break from these videos, but uh, trying to get back at it. Uh, you know what I mean, y'all. So today I want to talk about uh, the Benny Golson tune, Whisper Not. And I've done a couple other Benny Golson uh, songs. I've done Stablemates, I've done uh, Along Came Betty, and uh, this is just such a, a classic jazz tune. It's got like that vibe, almost like uh, reminds me of a like the theme from a TV show or something in the 50s, or a movie theme. It's got that real kind of cinematic, groovy, hip vibe. Um, and harmonically and melodically in all other ways, it's a really interesting song. Um, so Betty Golson wrote this, I believe in like the mid-50s, I was doing some, uh, you know, internet research about different recordings of this song, and uh, Golson recorded it on a record called Benny Golson's New York Scene, which is really interesting, really cool, uh, I was listening to uh, the version with uh, E.G. Grice is on there, and there's a lot of writing, uh, sort of, it's very arranged, you know, it's a large ensemble. I think it was first recorded by uh, Lee Morgan on a really early Lee Morgan record. I think it's Lee Morgan's Sextet Volume 2 or something. Uh, and both of these versions have different arrangements. Um, interesting intros. The Benny Golson's New York scene, it almost reminds me of like a Gil Evans kind of thing um, with the way that he, he writes for the horns. And the Lee Morgan one, uh, it's mostly Benny Golson's songs on that album. And it's a different arrangement, even though I think they were recorded around the same time. Uh, you've got, what's it called, uh, Benny Golson Jazz Tet with uh, Art Farmer is another version. These are all around the same time. And there's some Art Blakey sort of jazz messengers. Uh, there's a live version I found on iTunes. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot right there all around the same, you know, uh, late 50s, mid to late 50s, early 60s. I first heard this song on uh, West Montgomery Trio, a dynamic new sound, which I've said in a lot of these videos was the first jazz guitar record I bought um, at the record store back in like 1995 or something. I remember I bought that album and I also bought uh, Regatta de Blanc from the police <laughs> at the same time. In Providence, Rhode Island, I was visiting colleges with my brother. We were visiting Brown and there was a little record store. I bought Watch My Gary Trio and Regatta de Blanc on CD. Um, anyway, memories y'all, long time ago. And Wes's version is it's pretty similar, but he always throws it, especially on that record, he throws in a few little curveballs, like harmonic things. A lot of like uh, minor, major seven chords and things like that, but I'll, I'll show you what some of what he plays. But the basic vibe of the song, it's interesting, it's in kind of at least two keys. It's sort of in C minor and D minor, and I'm always curious how people are going to end the song, whether they're going to finally end it on a C minor or a D minor. Um, one other version that when I was at, at NOCA in the uh, 90s that people would talk about a lot was Roy Hargroves. I think it's uh, Diamond in the Rough. I think it was on his first record. And, you know, it was uh, uh, NOCA in the, in the 90s. It was very much like the trumpet, trumpet-centric trumpet school. We had Mr. Kerr as a trumpet teacher. And Nicholas Payton was, uh, you know, in the 90s in New Orleans, was like a god. And, you know, we had all that, that trumpet tradition at, at NOCA. So a lot of the people were like Roy Hargroves. And I remember one time uh, we were starting to play that song, and Mr. Carr was like, so who knows, like, an, uh, an older version of this song? Like, who, who played this song? People were like, Roy Hargrove. And I was like, West Montgomery. And he was like, yes. <laughs> so I got a little, like, uh, affirmation there for knowing the, an old school version of the song. But anyway, the vibe is like C minor, and then it walks down. There's a 2 5 G minor. Da, walks down. Da, 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 2 5 to D minor. Da, 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 it kind of turns around in D minor. And then the end of the A section. Da, da, walks up. D minor, E minor, F minor, G7, back to C minor. 
So it's interesting. It's like we're in C minor. 2-5 to G minor. Then a 2-5 to D minor. It kind of feels like we're in... We've, D minor was the resolution point, but then it walks up again. And then the bridge, uh, instead of F minor, G7, going back to C minor, it goes F minor, B flat 7, A minor, 7 flat 5. Although some versions, you know, when you go back and listen to these old recordings, sometimes it's not 100% clear what bass is doing. You don't always hear it with the fidelity that you would like to hear. So going into the bridge, sometimes I'm not sure if they're going F minor, B flat 7. Some versions are clearly doing that, but some other ones are like, are they going F minor, G7 again, to A minor, 7 flat 5? I don't know. But Wes goes, uh, the first chord is very much like a C minor major 7. Then a 2-5 to G minor. Very much a G minor major 7 or G minor major 9. Uh, and then every time, instead of G7 going back to C minor, he does like a, a, a tritone sub, but then like a D flat chord or a D flat 7. So you have that. So just like those subtle, uh, those minor major seven chords and that tritone sub, it's really kind of interesting. But the other versions are pretty closely like two five to G minor walks down, two five to D minor, D minor. Sometimes uh, I think the original Lee Morgan goes D minor, D minor over C, and then two five to D minor. Some other versions are like D minor. B minor seven flat five like one six two five. And you know the sec going into the bridge, uh, the melody notes of those ascending chords, the going into the second A, it's like the roots like D E F. Going into the bridge, it's the third, so F, E, A flat, B flat. And then the bridge of this played that wrong. I always went, always went for some reason, but it's oops. Yeah, that cool little walk up. And the bridge, it's funny, it always feels like it's just eight bars and the tunes, are, you know, uh, 32 bar A, A, B, A, but to me the bridge feels like a different number of bars somehow. I always get a little bit like eh, thrown off in my head. Maybe just because of the harmonic rhythm. So you have A minor 7 flat 5, D7 with that walk up, G minor, C7, and then E minor 7 flat 5, A7, D minor 7 flat 5, G7, back to the, the A section. But there's some cool like moving lines. So you have like to the A7, you have the E minor 7 flat 5, second half of the bridge, and you have against the melody, which is a B flat, that's sort of a, from the 13, natural 13 to flat 13, I always associate that with Tom Jobim, but you know, I know what's going on, I don't know who invented it necessarily, but then on the D minor 7 flat 5. So on the bridge you got So that's kind of cool. Um, those moving lines, you know, West does a different thing, and the West voicings really trip me out. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure them out. So what he does, he does the same thing. seven flat five uh, the 
last four bars of the bridge, you place this voice in. So kind of E minor major, uh, E minor seven flat five with a natural nine, and then that F sharp goes down to F sharp to F natural, and then this voice in, which I associate, uh, I think of that as an A thirteen flat nine, and then it goes down parallel. And then, oddly enough, the bass plays a D there. I don't know if they meant to do that, if maybe he missed the note and he meant to play E flat. But it's really interesting, you get this like... And then, D minor, seven flat five in the natural nine. The E natural goes down to E flat. Plays that 13 flat nine voice in again, but then the organ plays D flat. So that's a really cool sound. Here. You know, I associate West ballads and West slow songs with all those nice, like, very beautiful uh, chord voicings, sort of closed. Uh, they sound like, <laughs> it's not really closed voicings, but he, he has these passing diminished chords where he'll uh, think about polka dots and moonbeams and some of those ballads. But rarely do you get such a dissonant uh, kind of gnarly harmonic thing, or I don't associate that with the later West Montgomery, but that first record, he was doing some real interesting harmonic things. Uh, I mean, he always did. I'm not saying he didn't do that later, but the first record's a little bit different. Like, the approach is, is uh, it's kind of its own own vibe, and I really love that record. So, uh, and then, you know, back to the... And uh, I'll talk about playing on it in a second, but just the different uh, outros, man. There's so many versions. All the Benny Golson ones have different outros. Uh, there's a shout chorus also that uh, Benny Golson does sometimes. But again, it's not, not on every version. And Roy Hargrove doesn't do it. Um, I don't think so. But the Roy Hargrove, they end in D minor. You know, they do the... Uh, I think they do this kind of walk down... G13, but the West one, he goes, you know, and then kind of like, he ends on C minor, and uh, so you kind of have, I never know when I'm playing the song, sometimes I'll just do, I'll tag the last part, goes, so like, when I get to the D minor, like the second four bars of the A section, because it really is sort of in two keys, C minor and D minor. And uh, in terms of playing on it, you know, it's a lot of minor two fives. Um, you just kind of are outlining changes. I don't think that there's anything necessarily uh, unusual about the harmony, but I think it's, uh, you gotta get some blues in there and you gotta really sort of outline uh, the modulations and the key things. <laughs> Sometimes on the end of the bridge, I think people will do some chromatic sort of uh, side slipping. So you could go. You can put an E 
E flat minor nine in there, maybe like like on the, the uh, what do you call it? Seventh bar of the bridge, you could go E flat minor nine, A flat seven, D minor seven flat five, G seven, if you want. I don't think it necessarily needs those extra chords, but you know, Benny Golson will often do that uh, in some of his other songs. You have those uh, chromatic two five ones that play off of you know common tones in the melody. Some of Train stuff does that too, right? Like uh, Moments Notice. I've talked about that in other videos, that there's some similarity in that era, like mid to late 50s, between some of Train's tunes and some of Benny Golson's tunes. And they grew up together in Philadelphia. I remember uh, in the Monk Institute, Benny Golson came and, and hung out with us for uh, a few days, and he just sat in a chair and told these stories about uh, him and Coltrane growing up in Philadelphia and trying to, like, get information so they could get better at music and it was so hard to find anything they had to wait for someone to come back from the road and go bother them and try to get some info from them because you know these days we have uh, we're blessed with so many resources not just books but you know this generation YouTube videos I guess like this one and uh, just you know there's no lack of information you still have to do the work obviously but back then those cats like it was very hard to find so anyway, uh, Whisper Not, y'all. I'm going to play a few choruses on it, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Really classic tune with Benny Golson. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 